Our goal is to describe the way the atmosphere functions in terms of the energy balance between solar and longwave radiation. We will explain the changes in this balance that are caused by external forces, such as changes in solar radiation, changes in the albedo of the atmosphere, and changes in the longwave radiation returned to space. The main gases in our atmosphere are oxygen and nitrogen. However, water vapor and traces of other gases are present. The layer of gases above Earth's surface reflects 35% of incoming solar radiation back to space. Clouds reflect 24% and the Earth's surface reflects 4%. About 17% of incoming solar radiation is absorbed at various levels in the atmosphere. The gases in our atmosphere work to create a greenhouse effect, a way of keeping the Earth warm after the sun goes down. The sun emits shortwave radiation towards the Earth. When that radiation hits the Earth's atmosphere, about 35% of it is immediately reflected back into space, and the rest continues into the atmosphere. As the radiation travels through the many layers of our atmosphere, another 17% is absorbed, leaving around 50% of the original shortwave radiation to reach the Earth's surface. Once the remaining 50% of the original shortwave radiation reaches the Earth's surface, a small percentage is reflected by the surface back into the atmosphere. This is called albedo. The albedo varies depending on the surface the radiation lands on. For example, a frozen pond covered in snow would reflect much more radiation than a forest or an ocean. What isn't reflected is absorbed by the Earth's surface. The radiation absorbed by the surface is then re-radiated back into the atmosphere as long-wave radiation. This process is the makings of the greenhouse effect in the energy balance equation. The energy equation is as follows. Shortwave radiation from the sun plus longwave radiation equals shortwave radiation reflected by Earth's surface, albedo, plus longwave radiation absorbed by the atmosphere. This equation must be equal in order for the Earth's energy system to be functioning. Now what kind of things could disrupt this balance? As the CO2 in the atmosphere becomes more concentrated, it becomes more difficult for the longwave radiation to escape and the climate would get warmer. Then what would happen? If the climate is warmer, icy and snowy regions would begin to melt. Snow and ice are major reflectors on the surface and produce the most albedo. If there is less snow and ice, there will be less albedo, and this will cause the energy to become unbalanced. What if the Earth received more shortwave radiation than usual? A sun flare could be a natural cause of excess shortwave radiation. The atmosphere filters through the radiation in percentages, so if more radiation reached the atmosphere, more would be reflected back, but more would also enter the atmosphere. This would also offset the energy balance and offset the climate. To summarize how the energy is balanced between the Earth and the Sun, we made a demonstrative graphic. Incoming solar or shortwave radiation reaches Earth's atmosphere with 100% magnitude. Once the rays hit the first layer of the atmosphere, about 6% is immediately reflected back into space. As the rays travel deeper into the atmosphere, another 20% is reflected back into space by clouds, and an additional 19% is absorbed by gases in the atmosphere. At this point, only 55% of the original shortwave radiation from the sun remains and reaches Earth's surface. However, only 51% of that radiation is actually absorbed, since 4% is reflected by the surface as albedo. The albedo is dependent on what part of the surface the radiation reaches. How can we help maintain the energy balance between the Earth and the sun? The balance occurs perfectly in nature, so it is our job not to interfere with it. This mostly means refraining from putting unnatural amounts of elements, such as chemicals and gases, into our atmosphere. CO2 in the atmosphere prevents long-wave radiation from passing through and traps excess heat on Earth. To reduce those CO2 emissions, we can use less gas and carpool, make our homes more energy efficient by not wasting electricity or heat, reuse and recycle, and buy local produce. Participating in any of these things can help keep a healthy energy balance in our atmosphere.